Hello and welcome to Superstar Components Guide to Understanding Axle Types. Over the last few years it's got rather confusing with all the different types of axles, but it's actually quite easy when you understand the reasons between the differences. Firstly, this is a standard mountain bike type hub which comes in QR, 10mm by 135, 135x12mm 135 or this one which is 142mm. That refers to the length of the axle, this is 142mm from here to here. The next type is a boost hub. Boost was invented to give you a little bit extra uh, dish on your wheel to make the wheel stronger. It makes a big difference, especially now free hubs are getting longer. This is 148 millimeters across the end caps. And then thirdly, you have a downhill type hub, which is again even longer, and it has 150 between the end caps. Unfortunately, you can't swap between the diff different types of these because the actual body of the hub and everything is completely different. Okay, starting with the standard type hub. Normally you would have a quick release, otherwise known as a 10mm quick release, because the end of this stub is 10mm. This slots into the dropout on your frame. This is a standard type where you have a thin 5mm diameter quick release which slides through the axle and tightens up. The next model would be a 10mm through axle, which also is 135 from the, the face to the face of the axle. But the difference is you've got a big hole, because instead of the bike frame resting on the little stub on the end, instead of it, it rests on the 10mm solid axle which goes through. So this is normally referred to as a 10mm quick release, and this is a 10mm through axle. You can note the difference, a 5mm hole or a 10mm hole, and that has to match your uh, quick release. After that, we went on to 12mm uh, through axles, like a RockShox Maxil, where you have a 12mm hole through. Originally you had a 135 spacing as a standard hub. The, the downside to this is because the frame was exactly 135, when you put it in the dropout it slides around so it's very hard to get the axle to go through. When they changed to 142 the hub is exactly the same but you have a 3.5 millimeters extra on either side so it sits in a cowl on the frame so it's very easy. You slot it in, put the axle through and you're done. These are very common. This is probably the most common modern mountain bike hub at the moment. The next type is boost. The reason for boost is that it takes the same cowled dropout as a 142 hub but adds three millimeters to either side of the hub so the flanges move out by three millimeters. The reason for this is the angle of the spokes gets steeper uh, on, a, on a normal hub so as it gets steeper the wheel wheel gets weaker so on a boost one you get a shallower angle and therefore you make a stronger wheel for the same weight. So this is becoming the new standard. It's still 12 millimeters through, but it's 148 millimeters end to end. The next type is a 150, and everybody seems to think that a 150 and a boost are interchangeable. That's not true because the flanges are so much further apart on this, you have to have a 150 end cap, and this is like a 135, so it sits flat and there's no location on it. So if you have cowled dropouts, you'd have a 157, so it'll be really wide. The problem with having something this wide is that the chain line becomes so steep, it doesn't shift very well. So you have to have a very wide bottom bracket and you have to have uh, a compromised chain line, which is fine on a downhill bike, but not so much good on a trail bike. <laughs>